Hey there! Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Good morning, church. It's wonderful to be in the presence of God again this morning. What a privilege to be alive. What a privilege to come to the presence of our Father, worshiping, giving Him glory, exalting Him, regardless of what is going on in the world. The psalmist says in Psalm 100 verse 4, Enter His gate with thanksgiving. Go into its courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. And that's what we are going to be doing this morning. So I want us to just wave our hands and thank the Lord for the privilege to be here this morning. The privilege to be a part of this service. Father, we thank you so much. We give you all the glory. This is the day that you have made. We will rejoice. We will be glad in it. We bless your name. We lift up your name. We magnify your name. Oh, we worship. Masi Kaliba. We worship. We worship. We worship. I want you to be intentional about your worship. Just tell him how grateful you are. Bless the name of the Lord. Exalt him. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Our heart rejoices in you. This is how we win our battles. When we come to you, depending solely on you, knowing fully well that you are able. Father, we worship this morning. We give all the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet. Get up from your bed. Leave the kitchen. Just focus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. 
must make I will rejoice I will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it oh this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it
use for faith joy. Money, material things, career, family, they all could be blessed God for his mercies. But our joy is only in the Lord. When we have joy with God, when we have joy with ourselves, then we can have joy with others. And with other things that he has blessed us with. Father, we thank you so much for your joy that is everlasting. Your joy by that comes with our acceptance of the Lord Jesus and by your Holy Spirit that is dwelling inside of us. Thank you because that's why we are winners. That's why we win, win, win all the time. We give you all the praise.
Lord they began to worship him this morning this is how we win people we don't win by money we don't win by sitting down we win by worshiping we win by rising up and telling the devil you have lost it I want us to just give God praise this morning the hustle and the finisher of our faith our glory and the lifter of our head this is how we win this is how we win the fragrance of our worship released and it becomes fire we worship we worship we worship blessed be the name of the lord thank you for lifting us this morning thank you all Lord, for encouraging us this morning thank you for your strength this morning thank you for your power this morning thank you for your word that will not return to you void I see that situation melting by the fire of the Holy Ghost. I see that situation melting. We bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You, Lord, you are worthy. And there's no one that can worship you for me. No one. No one. Take this song again. You, Lord, you are worthy. And no one can wash you before all. Is my worship all of my worship? Receive my worship all of my worship. Is my worship all of my worship?
silent you. Tell him that overwhelming things around the world will not silent you. It will not stop you from worshipping him. He is the one we can depend on at this time. He owns the whole world in the whole of his path. The, world, the, the almighty God is still very much in control. We worship you Jesus. We love you Jesus. Thank you so much for this privilege. Thank you Father. We worship you. Thank you in Jesus name. as we are living we will continue to worship you father we pray that nothing will take your praise and your worship from our mouth in the mighty name of jesus christ father we just bless your name this morning thank you lord once again for bringing us together to worship you thank you lord for making technology possible so that from all over the world we can worship you together accept our thanks accept our praises let your name be glorified in the mighty name of jesus christ father we will be going into your word shortly this morning we pray that as usual we pray that to speak to us let your word come with power let the anointing be upon your word glorify your name lord in jesus name we pray Amen. We thank God for that wonderful time of worshiping God. It's always um, a great thing to worship God because the Bible says that God dwells in the praises of his people. As we are worshiping God, we are building a house for God. God dwells in our praises. And I know that as we have worshiped him this morning, you have experienced his power in your life in the mighty name of jesus christ so once again you are welcome to you are welcome to church so to say church is not the building church is the individual you know that are worshiping god together so we are the church it's not the building so you are welcome to church this morning and um, shortly we will go into into the word as we normally do on Sundays. Um, but before we do that, I also want to remind us in the Lord's heritage, the redeemed Christian Church of God, the Lord's heritage, the events marking our ninth anniversary will be taking place Saturday and Sunday, 25th and 26th of the month of July. God has kept us for nine solid years. So we are going to be celebrating God on the 25th and the 26th, Saturday and Sunday. So the details of the events will be sending it, uh, will be sending it to us, like I promised on Sunday. So today we just want to uh, continue in our series, the series we started on Sunday, I mean last Sunday, and the, uh, the, the series is entitled, What is Special About the Bible? what is special about the bible and um, we were saying that we are in the last days so many things that the bible has warned us about they are already happening you know the enemy the devil of course that's the only enemy we have the devil is doing everything to steal the word of god away from us you know, because we know that uh, there are two things that God has given us to help us. God has given us the Holy Spirit and God has given us his word. 
now the holy spirit lives in us but the standard that god has given to us is his word because the bible says that even if we believe that somebody is speaking by the spirit we have to make sure that whatever they are saying is in line with the word of god because many times the enemy will try to deceive people the enemy will speak to people as if is the holy spirit so the bible the word of god is the foundation is the standard that we have so it's very key the word of god is our foundation is the, the word of god is what tells us the mind of god and everything there is no way the devil can fake you know the word of god many people they have thought that they are you know that the holy spirit was leading them in a particular direction some people had dreams they had they had what looked like revelation and they believed that the holy spirit was speaking to them but when they check it with the bible with the word of god they realize that this is not the you know god that was speaking to them so the bible is the foundation it's our foundation as christian and that is why the enemy will do everything to discredit the bible that is why today you know the enemy is discouraging people not to not to have trust in the bible again and that is the essence of this teaching so we want to go back to the bible to see what is really special about the bible and last sunday we saw some charts you know showing that um, a lot of christians no longer even believe in the bible so i'll just quickly review some of the things that we talk about um, last sunday we said that uh, the word of god they are not of human creation but god inspired people you know to to write the bible so the bible you know is just it's not just an ordinary fairy tale it's not just stories of what happened god actually put it in the heart of people to put the words we have in the bible together and we said that the bible is truly stated of course because of maybe translations and all that you know there are some you know some things that may not have been copied accurately but the word of god you know is uh, you know there's the sanctity the word of god is sanctified you know the word of god is accurate and we said also that we need to remember that you know god used human beings to put the bible together so in the process of writing you know uh the some of the things you know that they write or the way they express some things they are culture coming between for instance you know people could approximate if uh, thirteen thousand two hundred and thirty three th people did something you know of course the bible may not tell you exactly it's thirteen thousand two hundred and thirty three you know the person writing it will just say thirteen thousand so there are ap approximations in the bible you know, and of course there are also reflections of the of uh, people's culture then of course you know the bible was translated i mean the original bible written in hebrews and greek you know in the process of translating you know there are some things that uh, there are some words i mean when you translate from one language to another there are some things that may not come out exactly the way it was stated in the original in the original tongue so those things are in the bible however the bible is is accurate is the accurate word of god then we began to look at what the bible contain then we said that we see the story of creation then the story of how some people work with god you know those are the things that god has put together so that it will they will guide us they will let us know you know the mind of god how people work with god mistakes that people made some of the things that they did very well then we said the bible contains includes the specific provisions and promises that god has made you know explanation of what is going on in the world and the future of man and all that those are some of the things that we see in the bible so by the grace of god today we will continue in our discussion and uh, you know one thing we want to focus on today is how do we know that the bible is the true word of god you know we said last sunday we are going to be looking at um, why is the bible superior and some common criticisms of the bible i don't think we'll be able to get to common criticism today but we want to look at why the bible is superior what is uh, i mean how do we know that the bible is the true word of god so again we are going to take our text 
you know we are going to take our text from second peter second peter chapter one second peter chapter one from verse 16 to 21 now here is peter speaking peter one of the disciples of the lord jesus christ he said for we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our lord jesus christ but were eyewitnesses of his majesty for he received from god the father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and we heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain and so we have the prophetic word confirmed which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts knowing this first that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation for prophecy never came by the will of man but only men of god spoke as they were moved by the holy spirit so in effect what uh, you know peter the apostle remember peter very close to the lord jesus christ he was like leader of the of the other uh, apostles so peter was telling us that look what we tell you about the lord jesus christ they are not fables <laughs> they are not stories that were put together peter was there on the mount of transfiguration he was there when jesus was transfigured when moses and elijah came down to speak with him when the voice came from heaven saying this is my beloved son so peter was an eyewitness so what he's saying is that look we witness this thing so we are not just telling you stories whatever we are telling you about christ we saw it so it's not just fables then also let's read the uh, second timothy second timothy chapter three second timothy chapter three it says all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work so paul is also telling us that you know all scripture is breathed god has breathed into the scripture you know every scripture that we read in the bible has the breath of god so they are not just ordinary words god has breathed into them you know so they have the, the those scriptures have the life of god and that is why the bible says that the word of god is quick and powerful and is sharper than any two-edged sword god said that wherever he sent his word the word will always deliver because those words they are they have they are spirits in themselves the lord jesus christ said the word that i speak to you they are spirit and they are life so that means there is life of god in his word so it's not just the letter of the word that is important there is the life of god in the word that is why the word of god can transform lives you know paul said i'm not afraid of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god you know to change lives so the life of god is in his word it's not ordinary word that we are talking about so um the message of today i need to let us know um i'm not going to engage in any academic exercise you know if people there are people that will never believe the word of god you know i mean when um when uh, you know in the story of the rich man and lazarus when the rich man and lazarus died you know the bible said that the rich man went to hell lazarus went to heaven and um the rich man was pleading let lazarus go back and tell my brothers oh sorry he said let lazarus uh, give me water to drink father abraham said that's not possible then he now said that, okay let somebody go to the world to go and tell my brother from somebody from the dead that maybe they will believe and abraham had to tell him that look they have the word of god if people don't believe the word of god even if somebody die i mean somebody that has that has died even if the person go back to the head they will still not believe so what i'm saying in effect is that there are people that will never believe no matter how much we preach 
So, <laughs> so people, if you don't want to believe, you will not believe. But I pray that as the word of God comes to you today, the word of God will find root in your heart in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, the, you know, the, basically, I'm trying to speak to three sets of people. Number one, I'm trying to speak to believers, those of us who are already believers, so that our faith can be strengthened. You know, because, you know, as the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, as it, as, um, you know, or rather, as we stay long in this ungodly world, there are so many things that we are going to be hearing, you know, that can be discouraging. You know, people will challenge you. You know, you've been talking about rapture, which, which rapture, when is it going to happen and all that. So it's to strengthen our faith. You know, the second group that I want to talk to are people that... Maybe you are not yet a believer, but the Spirit of God is already working on you. God is trying, is, is, has been, you know, trying to convict you of your, of your situation, but you are still not very sure whether Christianity is true, whether the Word of God is true, whether the Bible is true. You know, so I, I pray that uh, by this word you are going to be convinced. Then, thirdly, I want to speak with backsliders people that you used to be i mean you have received the word of god at some point you have given your life to christ at some point but because you have been exposed to you know so many so many teachings so to say so many ideas agnostic ideas so you no longer i mean your your, your mind has now left christ you now begin to say i don't think this thing is true i don't believe in it again so i pray that um, today as the word comes you know uh you'll be able to reconsider your position so of course and when we talk about the bible you know when we talk about the bible there are some questions you know for instance i said that the question we are going to be looking at is how do we know that the bible is the true word of god usually the same people that ask that question they also ask some other questions they ask how do we know that that the christian god so to say jehovah is the almighty god how do we know that Jesus is truly the only way to God? How do we know that the resurrection is true and all that? So normally, when you answer the question of, you know, how do we know that the Bible is true? Usually, you deal with all those other, other questions. So once again, I pray, as you listen to me, you know, I pray that uh, the Spirit of God will also com confirm the word in your heart. And uh, your faith is going to be renewed in the mighty name of jesus christ of course the greatest proof that we have that the word of god is true is confirmation that by god himself you know god himself confirm it that his word is true but then for somebody that doesn't even believe in the bible how do we how would they believe that it's god that is speaking in the word so even though that would have been the uh, the most important confirmation we will not use that now because if you don't believe yeah, i mean if you're already doubting whether the bible is true you know god speaking in the bible is not likely to convince you so we are going to look at some other things some other proofs you know that uh, confirm to us that the word of god is true and the first thing i want to address uh, this morning is that um, you know we know that the bible is true. let's start from what looks like more like a scientific you know method the stories and the writings that are in the bible have been confirmed by archaeological findings you know that's the i mean that's that, that's the most scientific we can go because that's even this what they call science that they use for evolution that they use to prove evolution and all that so let's use the same thing to prove the bible archaeology of course, archaeology, archaeological studies has to do with people going to a particular place where an event seems to have taken place and they start digging and they see some things, you know, maybe they see some materials which they now bring out and there are so many methods that they use to discover the dates when that thing is formed and it gives them an idea, you know, of what has transpired in that place. So, through archaeological studies, stories and writings of the Bible have also been verified. You know, of course, archaeology has its own limitation because archaeology, archaeology will not tell you that this thing actually happened. 
but when you dig up those things when you use the scientific method to you know to date all the items that you are seeing then you can say that okay they suggest that what has happened you know actually took place you know and there are so many examples you know in terms of the bible many things that the bible have stated have been confirmed by archaeology so what archaeologists have done is that they have gone to the sites where those events were claimed to have taken place you know at least based on the description from the bible and all that so many people archaeologists they have gone to those sites and they have dug around it and they got some materials and based on scientific dating system they have been able to prove that yes what the bible said about this is likely to be true and you know one example is in genesis 19. in genesis 19 the bible tells us that because of the sins of the people of sodom and gomorrah you know that um you know god sent fire and brimstone upon sodom and gomorrah and the place was destroyed now archaeologists have gone to that site and they have done their studies and they found evidence that around 2300 bc 2300 years before christ the place that is you know the site of sodom and gomorrah that they could find evidence of earthquake in that place so there was an evidence of earthquake more than 2000 years before christ not only that they saw some you know some bituminous you know some bitumen you know some bitumen soil that were as if were poured upon that place and remember what the bible says is that god god sent you know sulfur fire and brimstone from heaven so all those things they actually suggest to us that what the bible said is actually true and that's i mean that's the farthest we can go you know so as far as archaeology is concerned so that has been proven so many things have been proven by archaeology for instance another example is the wall of jericho in joshua chapter 6 we learn that god told the people of israel to march around Jericho, you know, for seven days, and eventually they gave a shout, and the wall of Jericho fell down flat. Now, archaeology between 1930 and 1936, some excavations were done around Jericho, and those excavations shows that there was actually walls around the city, and that those walls they actually fell outward, not inwards. Now, now that is significant. Because normally when walls of the city fell, because normally they dig some trenches around the city, you will expect the walls to fall inwards. But in this case, the walls fell outward. So since the wall fell outward, it covered the trenches that were dug around the city so that the soldiers could now use the wall that fell as a ramp into the city. And, you know, that was confirmed by archaeology. And even the archaeologists that discovered that, they were surprised. They are not necessarily Christian. They were surprised because they would expect the wall to fall inward, but this one fell outward. So, again, it proved that what the Bible said is actually true. Again, you know, for a long time, you know, um, sci I mean, people, critics were doubting the story, you know, when the Bible talks about the pool of Siloam, it was being doubted that no, 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 there was no such pool in uh, in Israel at that time. But in 2004, two, I mean, some local city utility uh, crew, you know, people that were maybe laying uh, laying cables, doing some uh, city plumbing works and all that, they just came across something. And you know, normally because they know that those areas are historical areas, whenever they see anything strange, they stop work, just like we do, you know, in the oil sand. Normally, when you see something strange, you need to stop so that it could be very fast. So, in 2004, pool of Siloam that the Bible referred to in John chapter 9 was actually discovered. You know, the name of the archaeologists that discovered this were Eli, Eli Shukuron, and Ronnie Rich. They discovered, you know, they were working on, you know, some um, utility crews. Where they were working on something different. And when they saw that, they had to stop. So they began to do the archaeology, uh, archaeological uh, diggings around there. And they discovered that it was actually a pool of Siloam. And just like the Bible described it, that's the way they saw it. 
So there are so many things like that, you know. Of course, in 1991, there was a tomb that was, uh, I mean, that, you know, somebody was found buried in a tomb. And, you know, there are some writings that were seen in that tomb. And those writings also indicate, or rather confirm that Caiaphas was the high priest when this person died. I mean, Caiaphas was named in the Bible in Matthew 26, 63 to 66 as the high priest. Um, yep, yeah, also Pontius Pilate, you know, um, was also discovered to be the Roman governor. The meat market that Paul described in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 25, the archaeology have discovered the meat market, and it's just exactly the way it was described. And uh, the great theater that Luke talked about in Acts chapter 19, archaeological find have discovered that. So, you know, the point we are making is that. A lot of the things that were written in the Bible, archaeologists, they have found them to be true. So we believe that, I mean, if those ones, if they have been confirmed, you know, I mean, there are so many other ones that are confirmed that I'm not, I mean, I can't spend the whole day talking about archaeology. But the point is that, you know, <laughs> we believe that, I mean, if all these things have been verified, then all the other things that are written in the Bible, they are also likely to be true. They are also likely to be true. So we believe that true, I mean, since all those stories and writings have been verified by archaeological find, they are likely to be true. Praise the Lord. Now, another thing, another proof that tells us, you know, that uh, the Bible is true, her prophecies. Now, prophecies are very important. If, if uh, there are three things that... <laughs> There is no other power could actually mimic. There are three things that you will not see outside Christianity. You will only see it in Christianity. Prophecies, miracles, resurrection. Those three things, they are only in Christianity. Only the Bible that you will see them. There are so many prophecies in the Bible. Of course, in the world of today, you know, or rather outside the Christian church, some people also give prophecies because God allows the devil to see some things. Some people also give prophecies. You know, sometimes they come to pass, sometimes they don't come to pass. For instance, like the, uh, like the assassination of John F. Kennedy, there was a woman that, you know, that uh, prophesied it, not a Christian. She said it was going to happen, you know, and it happened just the way she said it. But she also predicted so many other things that never happened. You know, that maybe some cities in the U.S. will be born. This one will happen. That one, they never came to pass. So sometimes the devil got some things right. Sometimes he doesn't get it right. But in the case of the Bible, the prophecies of, it is only, Bible is the only book where you have the prophecies 100% accurate. Everything that the Bible says. Of course, like I said before, miracles also, it is only true through the body of Christ that you see that resurrection, it is only through Christian, you know, I mean, through the word of God that it happens. So, now, talking about prophecy, so, why are prophecies so important? Prophecies are important because it takes supernatural power to see the future. Anybody that, you know, that uh, give prophecy is either using the power of God or using the power of Satan. It takes supernatural power for anybody to predict what will happen in future. And of course, using the power of the devil, the prediction could be sometimes, you know, in maybe in 5% of the cases, it will come to pass. 95% of the time, it will not come to pass. But when you talk about biblical prophecies, they are 100% accurate. Reading the Bible, there are so many prophecies that have already come to pass. There are prophecies about the future that are yet to come to pass, but not one prophecy of the Bible have, you know, have failed. You know, so, and that tells us that there must be a power that is more powerful than any other power, you know, that you can talk about. So, there are so many things that the Bible has talked about, and it takes God to be able to see all these things. For instance, prophecies concerning the salvation of man. For instance, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, you know, when uh, Adam and Eve, when they sinned against God, you know, God said that the seed of the woman is going to bruise the head of Satan. The seed, and 
we later of course we see it in the book of hebrew that that seed talks about jesus christ normally when the bible talks about a seed a seed is talking about a descendant somebody that will come through the lineage of that person and of course jesus christ came through i mean came as a seed you know of woman you know remember the bible did, note that the bible did not say that the seed of the man because jesus christ never came through a man he said the seed of the woman you know because joseph never met with mary before jesus was conceived so that is why the bible said that the seed of the woman he did not say the seed of the man normally the bible would say that the seed of the i mean when the bible is talking about descendant of somebody usually is the man that will be focused on but in this case the bible said that the seed of the woman so that means it is only through a woman that the christ will come from and that is exactly what happened jesus came through a virgin through mary so that prophecy has been fulfilled then prophecies concerning the greatness of the descendant of abraham in genesis 12 1 to 3 god called abraham he said i'm going to make you great you know whoever blesses you will be blessed whoever causes you because through you the whole world will be saved that prophecy is coming to pass today through the children of israel also genesis 15 4 to 5 you know god talks about even though at that time abraham never had any child but god said if you can count the stars that's the only way you'll be able to count your children and of course we know today the jews there are so many you know and they are the descendants of abraham that god called the, that god talked about so that prophecy has come to pass now there are prophecies concerning the fact that the jews and the arabs they will always be fighting in genesis 16 11 to 12 you know an angel appeared to hagar and told him that this boy you have his name is ishmael he will always be fighting with his brothers you know and that is what we are having today the arabs and the jews they are never at peace they are always fighting so it's something that has already been prophesied god told abraham in genesis chapter 15 from verse 12 to 14 he said know fully well that your descendants will be enslaved by another country and they will enslave them for 400 years but after 400 years they are going to come out with so much prosperity and that was exactly what happened the jews they were enslaved in egypt by 430 years but the initial 30 years was not really an enslavement it was like they went there themselves they were enjoying it then after that the pharaoh that did not know moses now rose then the enslavement started. so the, the slavery was actually for about 400 years and of course just like god has prophesied it when they came out they came out the bible said that they spoiled the egyptians so that prophecy came to pass then we see prophecies concerning israel going into exile because of sin and of course so many prophets in the bible i mean that is being repeated so many times you know god kept warning the children of israel that when you sin you will go into exile and of course that eventually happened then in isaiah 39 5 to 6 isaiah 39 5 to 6 you know there was a king ezekiah that was showing his palace and so many things to some officials from another country and prophet isaiah told him clearly that all these things that you are showing them one day everything is going to be taken away that prophecy was fulfilled 100 years later all those things were actually taken there were prophecies concerning the return of israel from exile you know the isaiah prophesied it in even this was even before they went into exile isaiah prophesied it in isaiah chapter 21 verse 9 and that prophecy was fulfilled in 539 bc now there was a very powerful prophecy by isaiah you know about 150 years before cyrus was born before cyrus the king of uh, babylon was born isaiah gave a prophecy that a person will become the king his name is cyrus and is the one that will allow the children of israel <clears throat> to go back to their land now this prophecy was in <clears throat> excuse me this prophecy was in isaiah chapter 44 verse 28 and that prophecy was fulfilled in 538 bc that's 150 years after it was prophesied why this is so significant is that 
God mentioned the person by name 150 years before he was even born or before that thing took place. God mentioned him by name that Cyrus, you are my servant. You are the one that will allow my people to go back. God mentioned him by name. And eventually, a person that was named Cyrus became the king and he fulfilled exactly how the prophecy was made. There are prophecies concerning the lineage and everything about the Lord Jesus. So, there are so many of these prophecies and they were accurate. And that tells you that there must be a God, there must be somebody who is more powerful than any other deity that could predict all these things. Now, prophecies about the Lord Jesus Christ in fact, there are, on, there are so many prophecies about Jesus Christ, you know. And uh, according to Bible scholars, or according to mathematicians and Bible scholars as well, the chances of one of a prophecy with one detail coming to pass is 50%. That means one in two. Is either it comes to pass or it doesn't come to pass. That's one out of two. Now, the, when a prophecy now has two details... The chances of it coming to pass, the probability of it coming to pass reduces to 25%. Because that means you are talking about uh, 1 to 2 of 1 to 2. So, the more the details of the prophecy, the more difficult it, you know, it is for it to come to pass. Concerning the details of the prophecies of Jesus Christ, it is actually impossible for that prophecy to come to pass except somebody is telling the truth because there are so many details about the prophecies of the lord jesus christ the details are so many that the probability of that prophecy coming to pass is completely zero for instance we have the prophecy that jesus will came through the lineage of judah or through judah in genesis 49 the bible said that the scepter will never left we never leave judah then there's you know there's prophecy that Jesus will come through the lineage of David, Second Samuel 7 12 to 13. And in Isaiah, you know, God promised David that because you know you are a man after my heart, because of this, you know, that there's a king that I mean the king will come through you and he's going to rule the world forever. In Isaiah 11 1, the Bible said that there will be a, a root out of Jesse. So that means Jesus will also come through the lineage of David. It's very clear. The Bible in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, the Bible says it that a virgin will give birth. So the, the prophecy that Jesus will come through a virgin is in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. The prophecy that Jesus will be born in Bethlehem is in Micah chapter 5 verse 2. The prophecy that John the Baptist will come as a forerunner to prepare the way for the Lord Jesus Christ is in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3. The prophecy that Jesus will ride a donkey into Jerusalem is in Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. The prophecy about the ministry of Jesus Christ, the kind of messages he's going to be preaching and that he's going to bruise the head of Satan, you know, Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 and in Isaiah 61 verse 1. Prophecies about the death of Jesus Christ, how he's going to die, how he's going to keep his mouth short when he's being tried and all that, is in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 3. Prophecies that Jesus will be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver, is in Zechariah 11, 12 to 13. Prophecy that is going to be crucified, John 3, 14 to 18 and Numbers 21, 9. You know, the prophecy that Jesus is going to be our Passover lamb, that somebody will come who is going to be blameless, who is going to take away the sin of the world, Exodus 12, 21 to 27. And, you know, it's also further explained in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Prophecies that the bones of Jesus will never be broken, because normally when criminals were, you know, crucified on the cross, after a while they break their bone, but the Bible made it clear that the bones of Jesus will never be broken. You see that, you know, in Exodus 12, 46, you know, God, to, God told them, when you are killing the Passover lamb, don't break their bone. And it's further exp explained in John 19, 31 to 36. And it's also somewhere in the book of Psalm. The prophecy that the clothes of Jesus, that they will cast lot for it, is in Psalm 22, verse 18. The prophecy that Jesus will resurrect is in Psalm 16, verse 9 to 11. 
you know the psalmist made it clear that it will not be it will not decay he said you will not allow allow my body to decay his father explained in Acts chapter 2 verse 31 and in remember in matthew chapter 12 some people came to jesus christ if you are if you are the if you are the son of god give us a sign if you are the messiah give us a sign and jesus said in matthew 12 38 to 42 he said adulterous generation they are looking for a sign he said but no sign will be given to this generation except the sign of jonah he said because as jonah was three days in the in the in the belly of the fish so, so shall the son of man be three days you know on on uh, in the under the earth that means he's going to die i mean he's going to be in the grave for three days he made it very clear you know so even i mean <laughs> some people have said that okay jesus guy when he knew about those prophets that he was now living his life to, just to confirm but it's not possible for instance there was a prophecy that jesus would be taken to i mean he would be taken to egypt and he would come out of there now jesus was still a baby when all these things happened he couldn't have influenced you know being being, being taken to egypt jesus couldn't have influenced himself being born in bethlehem Jesus couldn't have influenced himself, you know, resurrecting on the third day. So all these are clear prophecies. They are very clear from the Bible. And we know, you know, that, so it, I mean, you have to be divine. You have to be God to be able to give all these prophecies. Then, of course, we have prophecies concerning things that are happening today. Second Timothy chapter 3, the book, book of Revelation, Daniel chapter 2, remember even the the, uh, the Gentile king, Nebuchadnezzar, had the dream and some of the things that we are seeing in contemporary world, they were shown to him. Daniel chapter 7 all the way to chapter 12 is talking about so many of these things that are going to happen in the world today. Now, when, I mean, when you, a lot of these prophecies, remember when they were given, we are not talking about a modern world like this. In fact, when these prophecies were given, there was nothing to indicate that they will ever come to pass. Because the life of that period was completely different from the way it is. For instance, when the Bible is saying that a king is going to rule all over the world, that the whole world is going to be under the control of the king. I mean, you start wondering, how can somebody know what is happening all over the world? It's not possible. But that was thousands of years ago. You know, but now we are seeing it very possible. We are seeing that it is very possible for a government to have control over everybody on the face of the earth. So, I mean, satellite images will show you everybody can be under control. Now we are talking about um, tracing, contact tracing and all that. These are the things that are going to facilitate, you know, the, uh, the ruling of the antichrist the government of the antichrist so you know all the prophecies that seems that they could never happen you know the bible talked about it and they are coming to pass before our very eyes praise the lord so those are you know the prophecies actually is one of the key proofs you know about uh, about the veracity of the bible because those ones you can never duplicate it there is no other book that gives the kind of accurate prophecies that you see in the bible but what are the other uh, things that we can see? Early acceptance by witnesses. You know, now, it's very important, you know, when you are talking about an event, a past event, people that are living during the period that that event took place, their account is very important. Why? Because if a book is written a thousand years after an event has taken place, many things could have been changed even the people that witnessed it they have already dead so nobody will be there to challenge what you are saying to challenge your story like we remember i think a few years ago some you know some uh, government i think it was the uh, iranian government was trying to convince the world that the holocaust never took place that it never happened you know that the time that hitler tried to kill the Jew, that is just a myth that it never happened so that is how much people try to change history now that was just about 100 years ago and the world is already trying to change it so it's very important to get the accounts of people that actually witness it people that were living during the time that event took place their account is very very important because if somebody gives a wrong account they can always challenge it that no that never happened 
you know so that is why the stories of the bible it is very important that we look at you know the acceptability to the people that were living during that event and we saw that in the case of the bible you know all the stories all the books that were written you know they were written around the time that those events uh, took place for instance uh, in Acts chapter 4 we see that i mean when you read the story of Acts, they did not dispute even the the pharisees and the sanhedrins the council you know of the people of uh, israel and none of them disputed the fact that jesus died the only thing they were disputing was that he never resurrected that the disciples you know stole the body of course which we know that is, is not is not possible because that i mean the grave was be was secured by the roman army the very tough army that would rather give their life so to now say that the disciples that even after jesus died all of them were scattered to say that those disciples are the one that came to steal the body from the roman soldiers heavily guarded i mean it's it's not possible so it was accepted that jesus christ actually died and we know that he also resurrected because there are people that saw him after resurrect and they gave the account you know that they actually saw this man and of course the, the body is nowhere to be found today so this you know the, the the story of the bible even the old testament the story of moses and all that all these things were accepted by people you know that were eyewitnesses as at that time so it's not something that happened i mean that were written so many years after the event has happened you know and of course um concerning the old testament for instance the oldest scroll you know scroll where they wrote all those events the, the old testament uh, uh, the, the book of the old testament the oldest scroll that used to be in existence was dated 900 a.d but thank god in 1947 some earth men they now discovered you know some other scrolls they call them dead sea scrolls and those scrolls were dated 100 bc 100 years before christ and they compared it with the old testament document that the world has been using and they realized that they were completely accurate they were accurate so all this shows that you know both the old testament and the new testament they are actually accurate i will quickly um you know talk about the unity and consistency of the theme of the bible you know god used at least 40 authors 40 people god used them and these people they have different background some of them are shepherds some of them are priests kings doctors prophets prime minister historians all sorts of people god used them to put the bible together the bible was written in diverse location and the bible was written over 1500 years so despite all the diversities and all that the theme of the bible is one the unity of the bible is on parallel i mean for people diverse people like that writing over so many years in different locations and everything is pointing to the same direction to christ and the whole book is so united it shows that no there must be a god that is behind all this so all those are the things that show us that the word of god is actually true so i'm going to stop uh, today by next sunday by god's grace we are going to talk about some common criticisms of the bible then we are going to see whether the bible is opposed to science is the bible opposed to science and we are going to see how we can maximize the benefits of the bible but if you are watching us this morning you know now we know that the bible is true there are so many things you know i want to encourage don't believe what you read in the news don't believe what people are saying that the word of god is true i mean it's not true the word of god is true it has been proven god has no business proving anything to us but in his mercy he has proven to us he has shown us that the word is true i want to encourage you i want to encourage you accept the word of god today and the bible says that a time is going to come that jesus will come and take his own the bible says that except somebody is born again he will never see the kingdom of god are you there watching us this morning i want to encourage you make today your day of salvation accept christ today 
so that eventually when the kingdom of christ comes you will reign with him in heaven so that when you die you will go to heaven you will not go to hell i want to encourage you there's a prayer that is being projected on the screen right now i want to encourage you please pray that prayer mean everything that you are going to say pray that prayer and if you pray that prayer from your heart in accordance with the word of god you become a child of god immediately eh? so just pray that prayer the rest of us please let's pray let's pray that god should please continue to help us god wants to encourage our faith that is why we are receiving this word today so pray that god should help you that we never waver in your belief that we continue to believe the word of god that we never doubt the veracity of the word of god let's talk to god let's talk to him pray that your faith will stand till the end pray that your faith will stand till the end pray that we not doubt the word of god no matter what the media and all the other brilliant people of the world are saying pray that your faith will not waver that we continue to stand on the word if somebody that can predict so many things happening in the world if somebody can predict that it has to be the almighty god it has to be the almighty god alone that can give thousands of prophecies in the bible and everything is coming to pass that has to be god pray that we never doubt the word of god that god will give you the grace to stand that god will help you to stand thank you lord bless be your name in jesus name we pray our father and our god we bless your name we appreciate you we glorify your holy name thank you lord for your word that you have sent to us today thank you for the power in your word accept our thanks in jesus name father please help us help us to believe your word help us to stand on the word that you are giving to us we know that the bible is true that the bible is the word of god father i pray lord even as we have received this message today i pray that the enemy will never cause us to doubt your word again in the mighty name of jesus christ those that are watching that have not yet made up their mind father will pray that your holy spirit will convict them in the name of jesus christ and for those that are receiving jesus christ as their lord and savior today or those who are rededicating their life father please give them the grace to stand in the name of jesus christ thank you heavenly father in jesus name we pray amen before we uh pray over our offering we want to take the announcement right now so the announcement will just be projected on the screen so i want to encourage you to uh, to listen please hello this is the redeemed christian church of god the lost united parish fort macron Hello, this is the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Lost United Parish, Fort McMurray. Thank you for being part of today's worship service. We hope you've been blessed today. As we bring this service to a close, I'd like to highlight some of the events and activities happening at TLH this week, so that you and your families will have every opportunity to get involved. We'll be praying for OK and Ogunye family during the course of the week. God bless you as we pray for this family soul. Our daily teleconference money prayer still continues from Monday to Friday from 6 to 6.30 a.m. The number to call for this teleconference prayer is 587-788-2229. 587-788-2229. Intercessory prayer we hold on Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. prayer teleconference as well. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m. we host Bible study via Zoom. It's an evening of prayer worship and the word 
So please join us this Wednesday at 7 p.m. for Bible study. It promises to be impactful and life transforming. Don't miss it and please invite someone. Special announcement. The Lost Heritage 9th anniversary is coming up. I am excited to announce the 9th anniversary of RCCG The Lost Heritage. The theme of our event is unstoppable. Our anniversary is on July 25th and 26th. July 25th, we'll be having a family fun time, either at the movies or at the park. And on July 26th, we'll be having the grand finale at the Quality Inn Hotel. For those of us who are coming out in person, please note that we'll be following strictly the COVID-19 protocols as the safety of all is important to us. If you are not able to come in person, note that all our events will be live streamed as we do not want any of us to miss out of the celebrations. We are so looking forward to seeing you and to celebrate with you. Happy celebrations, people of God. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. We are so very proud of you. Congrats. Once again, thank you for worshiping with us today. It's our desire that you leave this service greatly encouraged and closer to God than ever before. If you ever miss a service or simply want to revisit the sermon, you can always check out or subscribe to our YouTube channel by searching for RCCG The Lost Heritage or like us on Facebook. You can also find more resources and information on our website www.thelotsheritage.org Have a great week everyone. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are all excited. The Lord's heritage of the redeemed Christian Church of God is now yes. God is faithful and we give him all the glory. It's time to take our offering. Uh, so please bring out your offering or you send your offerings to the email that has been sent earlier. And um, I know that the Lord will bless us. Genesis 8.22, the Bible says, Why the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and eat, winter and summer and day and night shall not cease so that means the time of sowing the time seed time will always be there it will not cease and this is an opportunity for us or even to bring our seed before god uh, remember that the word of god as we have been told is it is is authentic and it's proven that it is true and we know that for as many of us that have believed this word, we have experienced God in giving, in the area of giving. I know that even as you give, you will receive bountifully in the name of Jesus. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for our offering. We bless your name for the grace to give. Thank you for your word that came with power. Thank you for the veracity and the authenticity of the Bible. Thank you because we we are we believe we believe what is authentic we believe what is real we are grateful that we are living a life not a fairy tale a real life we give you all the glory in the name of Jesus as we bring our offering this morning we ask that you accept us accept our offerings let it be used for the furtherance of your work here on earth open our eyes more to your word help us to see what we believe help us to know what we believe help us to be confident in what we believe thank you heavenly father we thank you for your servant that you have used we ask that you continue to bless him with your word we ask that you continue to replenish him, continue to fill him by your spirit with your word daily new revelations and insights in the name of jesus thank you heavenly father in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen hallelujah i will lift up my voice i will joyfully sing not for what you have done oh lord but for who you are you are the reason i sing 
Jesus above every other name. We know that the name of Jesus is the name that is above every other name. We know that Jesus is the only one, the way, the truth, and the life. We have no doubt in our mind that we are on the right path. We bless your name, O God. Thank you for everyone that was doubting before now. Thank you for your word that has come with power. We bless your name. We worship you. We give you all the glory. Thank you, O Lord, for a beautiful week ahead of us. A week of favor. A week of power. A week of your victory. A week of joy. A week of lifting. A week of open doors. Father, we honor your name. We bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because this is how we win. We win by your word. We win by your word. We win always by your word. We bless your name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are worshipped. Let's not forget, Wednesday is our Bible study. Joining us at 7 o'clock, even to, 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 to study uh, at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the Zoom meeting details will be sent to everyone. Um, they're probably on the Facebook page too. Uh, let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Have a blessed week. Amen. Hello. This is the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Lord's Heritage Parish, Fort McMurray. Thank you for being part of today's worship service. We hope you've been blessed today.
As we bring this service to a close, I'd like to highlight some of the events and activities happening at TLH this week so that you and your families will have every opportunity to get involved. We'll be praying for OK and Oguye family during the course of the week. God bless you as we pray for these families all week. Thank you. Our daily teleconference morning prayer still continues from Monday to Friday from 6 to 6.30 a.m. The number to call for this teleconference prayer is 587-788-2229. 587-788-2229. Intercessory prayer we hold on Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. via teleconference as well. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m. we host Bible study via Zoom. It's an evening of prayer worship and the world. So please join us this Wednesday at 7 p.m. for Bible study. It promises to be impactful and life transforming. Don't miss it and please invite someone. Special announcement. The Lost Heritage 9th anniversary is coming up. I am excited to announce the 9th anniversary of RCCG The Lost Heritage. The theme of our event is unstoppable. Our anniversary is on July 25th and 26th. July 25th, we'll be having a family fun time, either at the movies or at the park. And on July 26th, we'll be having the grand finale at the Quality Inn Hotel. For those of us who are coming out in person, please note that we'll be following strictly the COVID-19 protocols as the safety of all is important to us. If you are not able to come in person, note that all our events will be live streamed as we do not want any of us to miss out of the celebrations. We are so looking forward to seeing you and to celebrate with you. Happy celebrations, people of God. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. We are so very proud of you. Congrats. Once again, thank you for worshiping with us today. It's our desire that you leave this service greatly encouraged and closer to God than ever before. If you ever miss a service or simply want to revisit the sermon, you can always check out or subscribe to our YouTube channel by searching for RCCG The Lost Heritage or like us on Facebook. You can also find more resources and information on our website www.thelotsheritage.org Have a great week everyone. God bless you.